Thank you for joining us. We have a very productive session today. We will make it informative and enjoyable. Let me begin by introducing Negotium's team. I am Sylvie Lachance, VP Managing Director of Negotium US. I will be your moderator. We also have my colleague, Kerry Brooks. Kerry? Well, hi everyone, I'm Kerry. Um, I am a Microsoft Certified Senior Consultant here at Negotium. I've been with Negotium for about three years, and my background is in operational management with an emphasis on accounting. Thank you, Kerry. In today's webinar, we will share our experience and best practices. The session will last about an hour. First, we will do a brief introduction of Negotium, and then we'll go into the actual demo. Please note that this session is being recorded, and all attendees are on mute. If you have any questions, you can go on the right-hand side of your screen. There's a question section there. You can actually write your question. We will answer all of them at the end of today's session. Negotium is unique in its offering of a full and complete Microsoft environment for the main market. We have been a Microsoft Dynamics partner for over 25 years. We are gold certified, have been a member of the Microsoft President's Club for many years, and are also part of Microsoft Inner Circle. We have offices in Canada and in the United States. Negotium offers a complete range of solutions and services, such as Microsoft Dynamics GP, AX Office 365, Dynamics CRM, Microsoft Azure, and SharePoint. We can also help you with different services, such as implementation and migration, integrations, development, training, managed services and support. We really are a one-stop shop. Before starting the presentation of Management Reporter, we'd like you to take a few seconds to answer the question that you will see on your screen. You can probably see the question now on the screen. It uh, says, how long have you been using Dynamics GP? So just take a few seconds to answer the question is going to help us to better understand the audience today. Well, thank you very much. So we see here that 50% of the attendees today have been using GP for more than five years, 28% less than two years, and 20% of the audience has been using GP for two to five years. Kerry, take it away. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, joining this webinar today. I'm very happy <clears throat> to be giving this webinar. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is going out of me. Um, after working with clients for a long period of time on their financial reports, I've kind of come to the conclusion that the MR application or management reporter application is being underutilized. And therefore, it's really making the user's job more difficult than it needs to be. Um, there are so many tools and uh, little tricks that you can use with Management Reporter, and it will make your job a lot easier. Before we get going today, I want to talk a little bit about the tool itself, and then I'm going to quickly talk about some of the components of the tool, so that way we're all on the same page when I go through the demo. So a financial reporting tool, it as a, a financial reporting tool, it actually uses Microsoft GP's data to, prepare, to prepare the reports and schedules, such as income statements, balance sheets, cash flow statements, trial balance statements, and any additional supporting uh, structures. We have the ability to build these reports and we can actually drill down into them, but we do not go to the sub-ledger area. Management reporter will not be able to go into fixed assets or payroll or sales transactions, but it can drill down for you and give you some attributes of the data that you're pulling. So the, manage, the management reporter has five software components to it, um, and I don't think a lot of people are familiar with that. The report designer is a standalone application, and the user will actually build and run the reports. This is probably the application that you're going into and using. Then there are two viewing report modules that are used. One is the report library viewer, 
If you're familiar with FRX, it's very similar to the reviewer that you were using in FRX. It is a separate application and it can be placed on your desktop as well as any other desktop and used. You will be able to look at any report that is generated through the designer. Now the web viewer uses Internet Explorer to render reports and it's a new functionality to management reporter if you're used to FRX. The web, uh, the web viewer, there's no local insta installation of a client that needs to be installed on your machine. You just need to be able to run Internet Explorer. And it must be Internet Explorer. Um, I've seen where people have tried to use other um, search and other Internet um, areas and it, like Chrome, and it just, it just doesn't work well with that. It can be downloaded like the report viewer, and it can be saved in folders just like a report viewer. So it's just your preference. Most people will use the report, the actual web viewer, if they are sharing reports out to a shared library for others to view. Then there's a new, a new feature that's called the report queue. And it actually shows the status of the reports that you're generating as well as any history. Um, it does take, it's using services that are coming from SQL. So it takes a little bit of time. And I do have some users that, you know, don't like the fact that it takes a few extra seconds to generate the report. But the good news is you're able to get at that report much quicker going forward. And the last, uh, the last part of the, uh, the application is the migration wizard. A lot of people probably don't see that and will never use it. It's mainly for consultants who are switching from FRX over to Management Reporter. So I want to talk a little bit about the key concepts and terminology that you're going to be hearing me use today. So the first one is the report definitions dimensions and they are actually the building blocks of the report and if you're familiar with FRX you're familiar with building blocks. The column definitions will tell management reporter what column of the report to represent. It can be actual or budget. It can be a percentage calculation based on another calculation and it can show month to date and year to date. It will also show specific attribute, attributes and these are the these are the attributes at the transaction level if you would like to know the sales order number that applied to this GL transaction or something in that effect. And it can also show a description. The row definitions will tell management reporter every row in the report that will be represented. It can be a heading, an account, a set of accounts. It can be a total sum or a group of rows, etc. The tree definitions are exactly like they were in FRX, um, and, but they're not required in all cases. Um, basically, you're going to use that if you want to start showing divisional reports and breaking out those divisional reports. But they do come in handy for uh, summarizing reports. The default report definitions are something we're going to touch on today because I think those are really going to help you in easing your burden in creating reports. It can take hours to create these reports, and I'm going to show you how you can quickly use the canned reports or the canned report definitions out of Management Reporter to create your own reports. And the last thing I want to touch on is the security, and it is based off of window, Windows Authentication. This is your Active Directory user ID and password that you log into your system every day. It is not your GP password. Okay. Well, thank you, Carrie. At this point, you will see a second question on your screen. It will help us to better understand the general competency of our audience. So the question that you see is, what is your level of competency with Manager Reporter to date? Are you a report creator, a report generator, or a new user? Hmm, interesting. Just going to wait a few more seconds to give a chance for everybody to answer the poll. All right. So, very interesting. So, we see that 40% of our audience today is a report, our report generators. 
27% are report creators, and 33% of today's audience are new users. Oh, thank you very okay. much. Well, that's good. So, yeah, thank go you. Go ahead, Carrie. That's that makes it very interesting for me because what you're going to see here is in this demo, I am assuming that you have been inside the application and understand some of the fundamentals of Management Reporter. So um, for those of you that are new to Management Reporter, you're going to get a feel for it today. You're going to be able to touch on it and see what the tool can do for you. If you need further training and instruction, Sylvie's going, to show, Sylvie's going to tell you at the end of this demo how you can contact us and get some more information and training. Because there is some basic training that should be done prior to um, actually creating all these wonderful reports that I'm showing you today. So um, with that, I'm going to talk tools. So there are several tools within Management Reporter that a lot of people are not using and should be. They will be really cutting your time in half. Um, for those of you that have created re reports, when you're going into, I'm going to go ahead and go into this report right here. And I'm going to show you a row format. Now, for those of you that are familiar with it, the time it takes to map all of your sales accounts and put them in. That's very, very time consuming. I'm going to show you how you can use the wizard to go ahead and create this basic report for you. The first thing I'm going to do is show you some of the little tools that I use up here on the top that help me out. And the first one is under the edit menu. And I use the find and replace all of the time. I notice a lot of people don't do this, but if you're looking for words, it's just like in any other Microsoft product. You can find a word and you can replace a word. So it helps quite a bit. The other thing that we can do is we can renumber rows. So if you're adding, so what's going to happen is I'm going to show you how to produce a canned row format with your mappings on them. And you may need to add rows. And in order to do that, you're just going to obviously highlight the rows you want to. And you're going to right click. And you're going to insert rows. When you do that, you may or may not have enough room for the row codes to filter down. If you don't, then the, let me go ahead and delete this, these rows. If you don't, when you come up to the edit, you can hit the renumber rows and it will go ahead and it will increment it based on the numbers that you want. Keep in mind when you do this, it is automatically going to change out your calculations on your total. So if your row doesn't start on 90 anymore, it's going to change that for you. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, the other thing that I want to show you is under the tools. The report wizard. This, I use this every time I go in to a new, uh, a new company and they ask me to create a basic balance sheet, profit and loss, or cash flow, or trial balance. The reason I use this is because I want Microsoft's product to do the heavy lifting for me. I don't want to have to do all this mapping. I may not know all of your GL accounts and what goes where. So I'm going to show you how this works. And um, from that, I'm going to build what's called a template. I call it my template because from there, I can create many, many, many reports without having to reproduce the wheel. So the other uh, tool in here that I'm going to show you today is the missing account analysis. And that's going to show us if we're missing anything. And so that's a very handy tool for us as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by showing you, I'm going to go ahead and close out this, and I'm going to close out this report for us. And I'm actually going to create a canned template for myself. And the way that I'm going to do that is by going into the tool and going into Report Wizard. Now, Report Wizard is actually going to take you step by step in creating your initial template. I'm going to do an income statement, and I want that income statement to be current and year-to-date. 
just a simple statement so that I can start with this and build on as I would like to. Then I'm going to click Next. Now, what this is asking me to do is define my sections. So my revenue, I would go ahead and I would scroll down. You can see all the accounts are listed here. And I know that my revenue accounts start with four. Okay, and I'm going to move up there a little bit until I can get to it. There we go. And by simply, I can go ahead and I can bring them in one by one, but I can also do a range. And the way that I do that is just like you would do with any other Microsoft product. You would push your shift button down and you would scroll down and highlight. And it highlights them all. And from there, you can just pull them all in. After I'm done with my revenue, I'm going to go on to all my other sections that I want to do. So I know that uh, this is starting up here a little higher. And I may have this amount. And I'm going to go ahead and add. And I'm going to do that all the way through all of the reports. Now, the good news is your report sections may be different than or maybe named differently than the way this wizard is naming them. No problem. Once we create the report, we can always modify and edit the row format afterwards. And it's much easier than creating it from scratch. So at this point, we would click Next. And you can see that it's giving us, an, it's giving us the row format information, and it's telling us what we have going on here. In this, we can actually move up and down the rows, and I'm just actually moving down and moving up, and you can click it and move it that way. Once I've decided that this is okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click Next again. Now it's going to give me the column layout. And remember, I decided that I just wanted a simple column heading. So I'm gonna have my descriptions of my accounts, my month to date, and I'm going to have my year to date. This says month to date right here, but it will be changed to year to date. So I'm going to go ahead and click again. Now I'm choosing the structure. What this is asking me is, am I creating a divisional report? What that means is, am I going to need a tree? Am I going to want to break out this one report into different divisions? Now, for my purposes, when I come into a new client, I don't want to create this tree right away. I'm just creating the template. I can create my trees when I create my additional reports. So I'm not going to go ahead and do that at this time. If you were going to, you could click here, and it would ask you, these are your segments, your GL segments, division, department, or account category. Account category is a new feature within Management Reporter. And if you're familiar with adding GL account codes, in that card window, it asks you the account category. And that could be either a, um, a revenue account, an asset, a current asset, an expense. And if you've got those set up correctly, you can use account categories from GP to create your, your reports. I find that most of my clients don't keep this up to date as well as they should. Um, so I would be leery about using this until you went in and reviewed all your general ledger accounts and make sure that they are in the correct categories. I'm going to go ahead and stick with just my one report for the entire company. And I'm going to click Next. Now I'm going to name my report. And I'm going to call this my KB. And it's going to be an income statement, and it's going to be a demo. What this is going to do for me is when we create the report, and this is going to be my income statement, the naming up here, you're going to see over here in the report definitions. And that is the name of the report definition. It will also coincide with your row definitions and your column definitions. So we can always change these at any time as I'm going to show you. There's a couple of tricks that I'm going to show you in order to um, actually organize your reports. And you can see how easily that can be changed. 
So the next thing it wants to know is if after it creates the report, do you want me to open it? And what period do you want to see it on? I'm going to go ahead and unclick this because I've already created the report for you, but I want to walk through the demo. So now this is, this is the information that is going to be created. And as you can see, the report name is KBIS Demo. It's going to automatically create a row name for me or a row definition for me, and it is KB Demo, and a column KB Demo. There isn't going to be any tree because I didn't want to create a divisional report. And so there isn't anything. And the report structure, because there's no, cre no tree, is to create one report for the entire company. At this point, I'm going to finish. I'm going to click on finish. And when I finish my report and I generate it, this is what's going to come up. Now you're going to see this is the report queue status. This uses services from Microsoft SQL. And what it's doing is creating the report and you can see that it's queuing. You can also see if you've got errors. You can see that I have some errors here from prior reports. That helps me in determining because there's going to be a log and tell me why it failed. And I'm going to be able to go ahead and fix this. But since the wizard did this for me, I know it's going to be right. And it's starting to generate. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I am actually using the report viewer to view my report instead of the web viewer. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's probably easier for you to read on the screen than the actual web services viewer would be. So it's just for the purposes of this demo. So now you can see I have, I have spent all of 10 minutes and I've created an income statement. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to go ahead and go into the row definition. Now, there's different ways you can go into row definitions, but for this report, I'm just going to click right here. And it has created and done all of this work for us. So what I would do at this point is I would actually render the report, and I would show the report to my user, and I would say, well, what do you think about this first run? Well, I like it, but it's kind of hard. I, don't, I, I would like to see these rows right here indented. I, they're just, it's just all too straight for me. We're used to seeing all of this indented. Okay, so there is my first change I need to make. The other thing is that um, I want, um, well, let's see what else I want from here. I would like to see instead of an October in a year to date, is there a way that I can have this report and have a rolling quarter report? I would like to see the year to date figures plus October in the three months prior. Can you make that for me? Yes, I can make that for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the two changes to my report template. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an Excel sheet for us here. And I'm going to minimize it. I'm going to use Excel to go ahead and indent all of these because I don't want to have to go through and make five spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop. And I'm only going to do it to the project revenue so that you can see. At this point, I can right click and do copy, or I can do a control C. I'm simply going to come into my Excel workbook and I'm going to control V. Now, what this has done is I've just copied it on here. Here, I'm going to create five spaces, and all I'm going to do in my A column is I'm going to hit my space bar five times. One, two, three, four, five. And now, I'm going to copy that down. Over here, I'm going to do a simple concatenate. So it's going to equal, it's going to equal this and this. 
and you can see that it's moved over the five spaces. Now all I'm going to do is copy down this formula all the way down to my revenue, and I have it all spaced. From here, I'm going to do a copy, and I'm simply going to come back into my management reporter report, and I'm going to right click here and click paste. And now you can see that everything has been indented. So you don't have to spend a lot of time actually working on the formatting. If you don't like the, the, format, the format fonts, you can copy this whole report over to an Excel spreadsheet, make the changes you want, and because this has got the same font information up here, it will go ahead and it will keep it for you. So you're not actually working within this box you can work in excel and you can save it at this point i'm going to save the report now i kind of want to see what that looks like before i move on to the second request my user has made so i'm going to generate this again and it should be coming up here pretty quick it's processing This is our report library, and yes, look, it's, in, it's indented for us. Now, we didn't do the cost of goods, so it isn't, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to do that. Okay, so now on to um, creating a rolling quarter format. We could do that ourselves, and we could go, and we could go into, we could go into new, and we could go into a new column definition, and we could start from scratch and build one. But why do that? Why reinvent the wheel? What I wanna show you is under the column definitions, I'm gonna go ahead and close this report out for now so that you can see. Down here under column definitions, I am now the default column definitions. These are the column definitions that have been provided to you from Microsoft. And I'm not sure why people don't play with these things, but boy, it's easier to create and then play with afterwards than starting from scratch. So for my example, I'm gonna use a rolling quarter. I wanna take a look at what this default rolling quarter looks like. So I'm just gonna double click on it. And I can see that it's got fill here, it's base minus one, so all of my formulas are okay. I could add any more currency displays or currency filters. I can add what I want you to here, but this canned out of the box is good to start. So how am I gonna quickly create another, another report? I'm gonna go back to my report definition. I'm gonna pull up my template. I'm going to go into my column definition here, and I'm gonna say, I wanna change this to my rolling quarter default. Now, I'm gonna save this report. File, save as, and instead of calling this income statement demo, I'm gonna call this income statement rolling quarter and I'm gonna change the name of it. To rolling quarter. And save. Okay, now if you look, there is another one right here. So I've got, I've now created a new report and it is my demo with my original row format in it. And now it's using Microsoft column heading. Let's go ahead and generate this and see what it looks like. This one's taking a bit of time because it's the first time it's writing the report.
Okay, so now I've got my August, September, and October. I've got my descriptions here, and here's my year to date. I can now take this to my user and say, how does this look? What changes do you want made on it? Would you like highlighting? Um, would you like the year to date on this side? From here, it is very easy to go in now that we've created a report and make modifications. I can make any modifications to this and I'm good to go. So in a period of four hours, I can create as many reports as Microsoft has given me the columns to use. And the same thing applies with, I'm going to go ahead and save this. The same thing applies with row definitions. There are report defi uh, default row definitions here that I can use. So if I want to have an expenses and just do expenses, I can start with theirs. All I need to do is add my codes and I'm ready to go. The other thing that I'd like to show you is how you can um, actually put your reports into groups. And then from those groups, you can create report schedules. You can see down here on the area pages, I have report groups and report schedules. This comes in very nice if I want to create a new report group. So at this point, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say I want to create a new report group. Actually, what I'm going to do is right click on here and create a new folder. And the first thing I'm going to call this are monthly reports. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Here, new report group. There we go. So now I have a new report, and I'm going to make this my monthly report because I want to quickly be able to, at the end of the month, pull up my reports and be able to schedule them, have them scheduled automatically, and publish them automatically. Where I've seen this used is um, where companies do a, a closing. They have a five-day closing. So during that five days, they're sending out preliminary income statements to their departments and their divisions. They're reviewing those. They're making changes during that five days. And so for a period of five days, they're getting updated preliminary reports. At the end of the fifth day, they do a final P&L. This makes it very easy because it's, we can create this report group, we can then schedule it, and then we can publish it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow, I want to see financial and account detail. If you're familiar with, G, if you're familiar with management reporter, you know that if it's just a financial level, you're getting the top level balances. If it's financial and account, you can drill down into those GL accounts. And then if it's transactions, we can actually go in and pull in GL transactions and the attributes of those transactions. This is a very cool tool, but I'm not going to show you it today because it would take a little bit longer. But this is, is once I show my users this, they love it. So I'm going to go into financial and account, and I want to see posted activity only. I want to start it on this base. Now, this override company detail and date setting is going to allow me to override at the time that the reports are pulled if I want to. So I just by default go ahead and do that. Now, what I want to do is I want to add my reports. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my trial balance. And I'm going and I'm holding down my shift key my detail, and my demo. And now they're there. At this point, I'm going to save it. And it wants to know the name of my new report group. And I'm going to call this monthly reports. Oh, 
Okay, and here we have it right here. So now what I wanna do is I wanna create another new report group. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this quarterly. And now I'm gonna highlight this and I'm gonna do another new report group definition. Again, it pulls up all the information. I want to see financial and account information. I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to pull up my rolling quarter. And again, I'm going to pull up my income, my income statement. So now I have two report groups, and they can be run. This is called quarterly reports. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now I have two different report groups. Now what I want to do is I want to schedule these. And the beauty of the report schedules are that you can actually schedule reports to come off automatically for you. If you've got them pointed to a shared site, they will automatically publish to that shared site. If they're departmental income statements on a preliminary basis, you're able to go ahead and um, securely put those reports in a folder based on your security levels within your um, Active Directory, and they're able to get at those reports. So I'm going to create a new, a new report schedule simply by coming down here. And you have the option, you can actually, you don't have to use report groups in order to uh, set up a schedule. You could just set up one individual report if you wanted to, but I want to group mine. So I'm going to group mine, and now I have the choice. I'm going to do monthly reports. This is an active schedule. If you want to inactivate schedules, because at some point you may have many schedules out here, you can inactivate these at any time. The scheduled owner is myself because I'm creating it, but you can grant permissions to other people to change the schedule if you want to. Then it's going to ask you for the starting date and it's going to ask you for the time it wants you to run the report. Most definitely um, for preliminaries, we probably run them after hours. So then in the morning when you get in, you have the day to review. Now the reoccurrence pattern. Is it daily or weekly, monthly or yearly? I'm going to do a daily, and you could do it for five days, and no end date on mine. So I have everything I want. So I'm just going to save this, and I'm going to call this my monthly report schedule. Too many O's in there, but that's okay. So now I have this. So at this point, the system will automatically generate these reports for you and publish them. So that's one of the other tools. There's one more tool I want to show you before I let you go for today, and that's the missing account analysis. If you are, and once you start creating your report definitions, and you're starting to work with your different rows and your different columns, and you're moving, especially on your rows, you're missing, you're missing accounts, or maybe you're adding and taking away and you've inadvertently removed one. How are you gonna know that except if you go to balance it, it's not balanced against your trial balance. So you could actually go through one by one and try and reconcile and figure out what's missing, or you can simply go in and do a missing account analysis. And I'm gonna show you how this works. It's up in your tools section, and it's called a missing account analysis. And this tool looks like it's really confusing. It's not. It's very simple to use. What it's done is, by default, it's looked at everything. So I'm going to give it a filter. If I have multiple databases and multiple companies that I'm consolidating reports in, I probably want to look at all companies or all database dimensions. And the filter that I want, what dimension do I want to use? Do I want to use all of the dimensions? I like all of the dimensions. I want to see everything that's wrong, if I've missed anything. 
And you can do it by dimension or value or building block. So what I'm going to do is once I put in this information up here on the top, I'm just going to click refresh. And what this is going to do is this is going to actually go out and look at all my reports and show me where I have missing detail. So the report is run. Now I'm in my, I'm interested in my income statement demo and my rolling quarter because those are the two that I've created. I don't see those at all under this report name right here. So if I'm looking, I can move this over. Let's see if I can move this over for you so you can see. And you could say, oh, well, my reports don't have any errors in them. Just these, just this weekly sales discount looks to be missing this 4140, 4141, and 4142. Well, okay, so I know that I don't have it in there. You could also exclude these. I want to exclude this, these reports because I know that I'm not working in those reports. Somebody else is going to have to clean that up. And I can refresh again. And now we're good to go. You see it's built, it's blocked it out. I have nothing with my reports with problems. So this is going to save you a lot of time as well. So really in conclusion, during this quick demo, I've created two reports in about 30 minutes. I, have, I haven't had to do any of the mapping or the formatting myself, but yet I can take, I can make changes after the report is created. I've also showed you how to use some of the tools that Microsoft has provided that will speed your job up and hopefully you'll have fun. Lastly, I've shown you how to organize your reports and schedule them to run automatically in a predefined folder or library that you've selected. So I hope that you've gotten something out of this and um, use these tools. They're there and they're going to make your life a lot more uh, easier in creating this report, these reports. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Sylvie. Well, thank you, Carrie. Thank you very much. So let's see here. We have received uh, a few questions. And uh, the people who have not asked questions already, you can just go ahead to the right-hand side. There's a little section here. It says questions, so you can go and type the question there. So let's go right away with the first question. This question is from um, David. Do you need to be a management reporter user in order to view reports on the web viewer? That question is for, by David. Carrie? On the web viewer. Okay, mm -hmm. well, David, no. As long as you have, you don't have to be a GP user or have GP on your, on your local machine at all. All we would do is install the web viewer, which doesn't require the use of GP in order for you to view reports. You could also view, um, we can also set it up so that you could view different time intervals on reports. The thing you wouldn't be able to do is make any changes to those reports. Okay, thank you. We have another question. The second question, this one is uh, by John. Can you include originating document information within Management Reporter? Can you repeat the question for me one more time? Sure. Sorry. Can you include originating document information within Management Reporter? Yes, you can. Um, the way that we would do that is by setting your report up. And let me see. I'm going to show you how that's done. Let's go back here to this. What you can do is when you're in a, a row, uh, an actual report, I'll go into this trial balance, for example. It, it all depends on the detail level. So if you're telling the system that you want to see some, uh, uh, some additional transaction level attribute information, you're going to come down and you're going to set your report up to be transactional level. Once you do this, you can actually go into the column tree, the column definition, and you can set up, you can call this right here an attribute, and from here you can set up attributes. So it will give you attributes, and it will give you your choices of attributes. Do you want a transaction description, account category, 
budget ID, if you're putting in budgets, all of these can be chosen. And you can also set up some other frequencies in here. What will happen is, I'm not gonna save this, but what will happen is when you produce this report on the column heading, and we'll go in and we'll do an income statement just so that you can see. You're going to have another column right here on the drill down feature. So I'm gonna drill down into here. And right here, it will give you that information, that description, that uh, invoice number, whatever it is. You'll see it right here. Okay? Yes, thank you very much. We have another question here. This one is from Sheila, and I will repeat the question twice. How does Management Reporter handle multi-currency conversion? How does Management Reporter handle multi-currency conversion? So if you were using FRX, you know that FRX had its own conversion that you had to keep up to date in order to run your reports correctly. With Management Reporter, Management Reporter actually goes out and looks at the GP database for that company, and it looks at the tables that hold the multi-currency information. So you don't have to keep up two separate sets of currency and rates in order to do that. As long as you've got it kept up and current in your GP, they will, they will come out with the currency conversions in the Management Reporter reports. Thank you. We have another question here. This one is from Alex. Is there a way to create a column so that I can show a percentage of a value? For example, I would like to have a simple percentage that shows the gross profit percentage based on sales and cost of sales. I'll repeat the question again. Is there a way to create a column so that I can show a percentage of a value? For example, I would like to have a simple percentage that shows the gross profit percentage based on sales and cost of sales. Carrie? Yes, there is. And I'm probably thinking that there is probably a canned report here that you can start with. But the way that we would do that is we are tying the columns to the rows. And in the column heading, what we would do is we would come in here and we would basically start we would create our uh, percentage. So we'll call this um, uh, ratio. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make a calculation. Up here, I'm gonna put percentage. And you can see that you can play with, I can come here and I can copy the format and bring it over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a calculation. And what is my calculation going to be? We're going to come down here to the formula section. And on the formula section, what I'm going to do is I want a percentage. So I'm going to do C divided by B. Oops, B. And that's all I'm going to do. But what I want to do is I want to do the um, format. So I'm going to come into the format, and I'm going to change it to a percentage. And I want that percentage to be two decimal places. And I'm going to click OK. That's all I need to do in the columns. In the, in the actual row format, I'm going to come up and I'm going to tell my columns where to start. So here I would put a CBR. That, if you used FRX, you're familiar with it. And then it will take it until it sees the next CBR, which would be, we'll do cost of revenue. So at this point, if I were to run this report, I would actually be able to see on my gen when I generated it, and I'm not going to generate it for you because it's going to take too much time. I'm just going to go back into this for you. You would see a ratio column here and a percentage, and you would see the percentages right down here. Okay. Thank you. 
We have another question from Akbar. Can we drill down to GP within Management Reporter? Can we drill down to GP within Management Reporter? Okay, um, I'm thinking that the question that you're asking is, can, how far can we drill down based on in Management Reporter and see GP information? We've kind of talked about adding an attribute to that, but I can go down to the financial and account level and I will go ahead and this is my demo. So I'll go ahead and I'll generate this and I'll show you. What I've done is I've changed it from a financial from a financial and account level to the transaction level so that we can drill down. Okay. And once this comes Thank up for us, we're gonna let this come up real quick. And it should take just another second, and I will show you how you can drill down. Okay, so let's pull our sales to date. If I want to see, if I want to drill down and I'm inside the report viewer, I can double click. And now I have the account information total. If I want to drill down again, I'm double clicking. And it's actually showing me, it will list all of the transactions here that make up that total of 15,089. The other thing that you can do, and I'm going to actually um, show you this, is I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. I'm going to regenerate the report. And what I find useful, especially uh, during the first few months, is actually pushing it down to Excel. And when I do that, it asks me a couple of questions. Do I want to do the current view or the current reporting unit? Do I want to include comments? Yes. I want to export all of the information. I don't want a single worksheet, and I'll show you why in a second, because under my detail, I've asked to see transactions. So I'm going to leave this unclicked, and I do want to open the workbook after I do it. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to push it down, and in it, it's exporting, and it's brought it up for me. And you can see that it can bring it, it brings it down here. If I were to have put the transaction level detail or put any of the attributes, added attributes, it would come on a second sheet for me. So here would be my first sheet. Here would be the corresponding backup data to that sheet. And you can go as far down as the transaction level on that and actually include attributes if you choose to. Okay. okay. Thank you. We have another question here. Um, this one is from Weston. Is there a way to bring in data from an outside source into my reports? I repeat, is there a way to bring in data from an outside source into my reports? Yes. Um, let me think of an example that we would use for that. Um, let's say we have um, budget data. And we haven't used the budgeting tool within GP, so therefore we can't create a column here that says budget. Um, what we can do is we can create an Excel spreadsheet. You can have that information on an Excel spreadsheet, and you can actually link it to a report in an external report under the um, output and distribution headers and features and the settings. There is, there is a selection to bring in external amounts. And once you tie that into this report, remember the Excel spreadsheet has to be in a shared location so that anybody who wants to view these reports has permissions to see that external information from the Excel spreadsheet. But then you, yes, you can definitely generate it from there and you can include that external data. Thank you. Um, another question here, this one is from Natella. Is there a manual? 
for management reporter? Is there a uh, manual for management reporter? Yes, yes, yes. And I really, really suggest that people use this because it's very easy to use and you can download it or you can get it completely online. All you're going to do is come in here to help about Management Reporter and Management Reporter Help. When you go into Management Reporter Help, you're gonna see all of the manuals in here. You can download them. You can also use your function buttons at any point during any, any area. If I click, simply click F1, I'm gonna get the information I need for whatever window I'm in. So it's just like GP in that regard. Very well, thank you very much. And one last question because of time. Um, it's already 1.56, but all the questions we have not answered, we will contact you directly. One last question here. Let's say we'll go with the lady, Nancy. How do we export to Excel by default and not having to see report in viewer, then export? I'm gonna repeat this. How do we export to Excel by default and not having to see report in viewer, then export. Carrie? So what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to generate the report directly into Excel. Is that, I'm, I'm assuming that that's probably what they're asking in there. Um, I don't know that you can do that without generating the report first, but instead of opening it up afterwards, I know in the web viewer um, it pops up and then there's a button to push. And so it won't take as long to generate, but you do have to go through those Microsoft services that we talked about and the report queue in order to get it to render the first time. And it's always gonna render the report. But from there, you can just click the Excel button and it'll, uh, it'll push down for you. There are, um, there in within Dynamics GP, there are refreshable Excel reports which may be something you're looking for. Um, and that really doesn't even use management reporters. So if you're looking for um, totals on uh, accounts or groups of accounts, we can actually do that with a refreshable Excel report in GP instead of using management reporter. Okay, thank you very much. So at this point, I would like to uh, thank everyone and we hope that you enjoy today's session. The next webinar will be Thursday, December 7th on year-end closing, so I hope you can join us then. If you are interested on any additional training on Management Reporter or on any other offering, you can reach us at info at negotium.com, info at negotium.com. And there's also one last question if you'd like us to reach you directly. I'm going to launch the question right away. So which of the following would present best your needs? Do you need training on management reporter, training on GP, or consulting hours? So again, Carrie and I would like to thank you for being here today and hope to see you next time on December 7th. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.